Hello, and welcome to this introductory public speaking video. My name is Nikhil Goud, and I'm an instructor with the Speech and Debate Canada Foundation, an organization which partners with competitive kids STEM to bring you unique and interesting public speaking and debate content. In today's video, I'm going to be running you through the six P's of public speaking. This simple cheat sheet is a way that you can remember some steps to a good, strong, and compelling presentation. The six P's of public speaking are projection, pace, pitch, pausing, poise, and poetry. Each of these steps is a unique way in which you can improve and strengthen your public speaking. I'm going to be walking you through each of the six P's and also giving you some tips and tricks as to how you can implement them right away in your day-to-day -day public speaking and also in your professional public speaking. Let's get started. The first P of public speaking is projection. Now, simply put, projection just means the volume at which you're speaking. Sometimes you need to speak louder, sometimes you need to speak softer. But the most important thing is to remember that your speech and your voice needs to reach the person at the very back of the room. So if you are standing and you're only reaching the first two rows or four rows, that's not good enough. You need to make sure that you're reaching the person in the very, very back. Here's a fun way I like to think of it. If you put your grandparent, who's maybe a little bit hard of hearing, in the audience, and maybe even put them in the very back row of your auditorium, would they be able to hear you speak? If the answer is yes, then that probably means you're speaking with the right volume and confidence to make sure that they can hear you. Simple lesson from this is always make sure the very back of the room can hear you. The second P of public speaking is pacing. Now think about your teachers in the classroom. If they're explaining a complicated concept around math, science, or they're talking about a book that you've just read, and they speak really fast like this and try and explain it to you, you're not going to be able to understand it. Their words are going to fly over your head, go in one ear and come out the next. Because when someone speaks too quickly, especially about a complicated topic, you're not going to be able to understand what they're saying. But also, if I really slow down, and I put lots of gaps and speak very, very slowly, then you're also just going to fall asleep in the audience. So that means when you're preparing for a speech or you're preparing for a public speaking engagement, you need to understand when to speak fast and when to speak slow. For example, what I'm saying right now isn't super complicated, so I can keep a relatively average pace. I don't have to speak very, very slow. But if I wanted to grab your attention, like I'm doing right now, I might want to slow down speaking a little bit. Or if I want to make sure that you understand a complicated topic in my speech, I also need to make sure I slow down. Pacing is all about making sure that your audience can follow you. Okay, for P number three, let's talk about pitch. Pitch all comes down to the tone of voice. What does tone of voice actually mean though? Well, if I were to speak to you about a serious issue like poverty in Canada, I would need to use a serious tone of voice like I'm doing right now. In order for you to understand that what I'm saying is important, serious, and really necessary for you to understand. But if I were to talk to you about, let's say, my dog and all the funny things that she does around the house during a day, I would want to employ a more humorous and upbeat tone like I'm doing right now. And I may want to make sure that you understand that this is the time that it's okay to laugh, that I'm not speaking about something serious. Pitch is how you modify your voice to make sure that your audience can understand and follow the different tones of the speech. If I gave my whole speech monotone, with no variations in pitch, you're probably not going to be very interested. And similarly, 
If I gave my speech only in a serious tone, you would probably think that it was too much and also disengage from what I'm saying. If you were to look at your speech, you'd be able to see different tones throughout, which means that you need to adjust your pitch accordingly. Speaking in a higher register might be something more humorous, fun, and light. And lowering, deepening your voice, means that we need to be serious, that I really need your focus and your attention. What I would encourage you to do is that when you're preparing for a public speaking tournament or engagement, Look through your speech and mark down where exactly are you going to need a serious tone, a humorous tone, a light tone, or a heavy tone. As a result of that, you're going to need to adjust your vocal pitch accordingly. And that's really how you can capitalize on this P of public speaking. The fourth P of public speaking is pausing. Pausing is such an important part of a good speech. The public speakers who amaze us, who make us follow every one of their words, are those who know how to pause at the right moment. Those who make you want them to say the next word or the next sentence. Those who make you want to know the end of the speech, to finally figure out what their conclusion is going to be. Pausing plays a very important role in that. Pausing is what allows someone to understand if a statement has extra importance or extra weight. If I were telling you a sad story or an important story, I might want to pause at different parts so that you fully understand and know that what I'm saying could be something very sad or something very personal. Similarly, though, it's also important that you leave the audience time to absorb what you said. If I were to explain a complicated concept, or perhaps even say a very, very sad story, and not pause after, I'm not giving you, the audience, a chance for it to sink in. Let me give you an example. If I were to be giving you a speech, like the example I said before about poverty in Canada, and I said something like this. Today in Canada, 15% of Canadian youth are homeless. I'm going to leave a pause after that statistic because it is deeply distressing and sad. And I want to make sure that the audience has a moment to sit with that fact. Let it sink in. Let them fully understand and appreciate the gravity of that statement. After they have received that nugget of information, then I can move on because they're ready to continue the journey with me. Ultimately, Pausing can let you show the significance and importance of something to the audience, but also ensures that you're not leaving them behind and that they're able to keep up with the important things you're speaking about in your speech. Number five is poise. Poise is confidence. Poise is getting up on stage excited. Poise is when the audience knows this is someone who is excited to speak to me someone who is really looking forward to delivering this speech. But poise is easier said than done. How do we become confident speakers? How do we make ourselves more approachable to the audience? First thing you can do is to make sure that you're removing filler words from your speaking. Um, but, likes, Other such grammatical errors make you sound like an inexperienced speaker and also a nervous speaker. Throughout these videos, there are times where I may have almost said um incorrectly or also like incorrectly. Instead, what I've done is left room for a pause. None of you watching this then may think, oh, he's stumbling across his words. He doesn't know what he's saying. Instead, you think I'm pausing in the right moment because it's what I intended to do. I planned that pause, it's going perfectly. If you remove those filler words from your vocabulary, it ensures that you still sound professional, calm, composed, and also collected. The other piece about poise is having a presence on stage. Always remember, from the moment you walk on stage, your speech has begun. When you walk up to the microphone, shoulders back, looking and smiling at the audience, prepared. And when you begin speaking, make sure you look to the audience. You're not afraid of them. Look at them. 
make eye contact with them, show them that you are engaged as a performer. All these things together ensures that you can have poise as a public speaker. The final P of public speaking is poetry. Poetry really speaks to the content of the speeches and presentations that you deliver. There are one million and one different ways to say the same sentence. I might say, art is beautiful because it shows us about many different themes in the world. Or I might say, art is the ex medium through which we understand creative expression. Or I might say, art is a universe which we can never fully understand or access, etc., etc. I could say the same sentence over and over again in a multitude of different ways. What's important to realize, though, is that you can make your speech more interesting and accessible if you take the poetry of language and of words and make sure that you're not repeating yourself unnecessarily. And also, that you're not saying something in a way which is bland and boring. In debating, for example, we might say something like, gambling is bad for people. That could be true, but I haven't really said it in an interesting way. Now, what if instead I were to say, scientific studies show that gambling is addictive. When people get caught in this kind of addiction, it can cause financial harm, losing money for their families and for their children. I've said the same thing, but flushed it out with nicer words and with some evidence. What I would encourage you to do is that when you're writing or preparing a speech, look through and look at a few things. First, look at sentence length. Are all your sentences the same length, maybe too long, maybe too short? That probably means you're using some kind of repetitive poetry. But secondly, have you made sure that the words fully understand your audience? If I were doing these videos or any other kind of speech for a group of five-year-olds in grade one, I would use very, very different words. If for a group of 15-year-olds to a group of 40-year-olds, I might need to change my language a little bit. Basically, make sure that your language suits the audience and make sure that it's approachable, understandable, and interesting for whatever unique group of people you're going to be speaking to.